Before starting your project, you should be very clear to yourself, partners and those who will be assessing the project about why you really need to implement a particular mobility. Clearly identify the needs of specific organisations and participants who are willing to take part in the project. What kind and level of experience, background and interests do potential participants possess? Partners should consider the following aspects. What training and development needs have been expressed by partner organisations and potential participants? What are the key reasons for organising such an activity? What are the major interests of the organisations involved? Mobility of youth workers aims for professional development and therefore the next step is to clearly define the competences which would be addressed and developed throughout the project. Try to break down the competences into smaller components knowledge, skills, attitudes, values, readiness to act. This will help you define the educational objectives and major content elements of the activity. Consider these questions carefully. What is the general aim of the project? What are the objectives, or, in other words, what is it that this particular activity should do? Which outcomes and results should you expect to achieve? Once you map out the educational content, partners of the project need to decide how long the educational process should be. Should it be just one mobility project for the group of youth workers? Or should it be a long-term training process with several mobilities involved? These decisions depend on the ambitions of the project. The Erasmus Plus program gives a wide range of possible mobility formats. The activity can last from two days to two months, and the size of the group can be from just one person to 50 people. If partners just want to share experiences, maybe a four-day seminar would be enough. But if you wish to develop a set of competences, which requires not just training, but also time to practice and reflect on them, you may choose a longer-term educational process involving several mobilities. Try to clearly define why exactly you chose this type of mobility, seminar or training course, or job shadowing, or any other type of project. Depending on your answers to these questions, you can start building a team of facilitators and the framework for your activities program. The composition of the team depends on a variety of considerations and practical criteria. Are people with particular functions in the organisation to be included? What are the financial means available for hiring facilitators? What appropriate knowledge, skills and experiences should the team of facilitators have? How will the team of facilitators relate to the composition of the foreseen group of learners? Should facilitators be the same field as the participants? Should they be from the same region or countries? What languages should they speak? While the individual competences of facilitators are important, it is crucial to look at how their capacities complement each other. A team works best when competences and resources not only complement each other, but are also used constructively in relation to the objectives of the activity.